The early signs are that Mauricio Pochettino is turning Chelsea back into an attacking, exciting side by changing several key things from last season. Let's dig into that and explain what we've seen so far. It's absolutely no surprise whatsoever to see Pochettino turn to his tried and trusted 4-2-3-1 formation. Here's what it looks like in a Chelsea context. This is the team that started the second pre-season game against Brighton. Colwell and Silva at centre-half. You've got Chilwell and Gusto here at fullback. Gusto playing while Rhys James is injured. A double pivot of Gallagher and Santos. A slightly more advanced attacking midfielder in Chukwuemeka at number 10 to form a nice midfield triangle. You've got Raheem Sterling here playing on the right-hand side. And Kunku played as the nine against Brighton to start with, but Nick Jackson has done really well there and we'll come to that later. That's really, really important. And for this game, Ian Martson, returning from loan, was playing at left wing. Now, one of the first things I want to draw your attention to is actually something that Pochettino said in a post-match press conference during the summer tour. And it may look a little bit like a bland, standard manager statement, but I want to draw your attention to specific words in this that really do mean something in Chelsea's context. He said, I am happy. I saw many positive things. I'm so happy with the attitude of the players and the staff. We showed great attitude and energy. So there's two words there in particular, attitude and energy. Now we all watched Chelsea at the end of last season and it looked like they felt very, very sorry for themselves. And with no goal in mind, it's harsh to say they're down tools, but the motivation wasn't quite there. And we saw that the fitness issues that have plagued them all the way through the season had started to compound a very bad preseason last season, where they famously took more flights than played games, really plagued them. And by the end, Frank Lampard was at a loss as to what he could do with a team that simply were not fit enough to compete at a Premier League level. So already we're seeing a massive change here. I'm watching the body language of the players. I'm looking at players on their toes rather than on their heels. I'm not seeing anybody with their hands on their hips looking around. You see no one on their haunches either. These players look fit. Whatever they've done for the first two weeks of pre-season in terms of fitness is working. This is huge because without fitness, Pochettino cannot coach. They cannot play his style of play without great energy. And we're already seeing lots of players pressuring and pushing forward and dragging up into nice, nice tight units, the midfield, supporting the attackers, and you regularly see five players very high up trying to block, build up play from the opposition, try and catch them in the passing lanes. This looks good. This is exactly what Pochettino demands, and the players look like they're up to the task. All right, let's go from off the ball stuff to on the ball stuff. It's always much more interesting anyway. And what we've seen so far from Chelsea, nice hints of possession play, and one particular pass they're trying to play, which is really interesting, because it wasn't there last season. What's happening is they're moving into a temporary back three. Thiago Silva ends up in this very comfortable, very familiar central centre-back role. Gusto dropping in from right back into right centre-back. That pushes Colwell into this channel. The midfield is moving over here and that is activating Chilwell for this run. This is li He's literally making a 50, 60 yard run and he is pushing himself all the way up to the pitch so he's level with the number nine at certain points. What they're trying to do here is activate this pass from Levi Colwell. His passing range is amazing. Chelsea fans haven't really got to experience or enjoy this at first team level just yet, but it's happening right now. And Colwell, two or three times in the first half against Brighton, was able to push this ball over behind, inch perfect, Chilwa runs onto it, and then from there, his idea is to cross the ball into the box or to combine with a few of these players. Coincidentally, while this is happening, if you've noticed, but this looks suspiciously like a box midfield, the term that we're all using nowadays, all the top clubs are trying to use it. And what that means is you've got your back three, your box midfield and your front three. If Chilwell is caught up the pitch, if they lose the ball, they've got good central compaction. They've got lots of players in the central zone to make sure that they can guard that area. It means they're pressing and they're counter pressing and their ability to win the ball back, but protect themselves if they lose this ball is very, very strong. Now, while Chelsea are in this temporary back three, they don't have to use Colwell's long pass to get out. They can circulate the ball quite cleanly around the back as well, using this back three and using Kepa as someone that can play the ball into the path of these three players. I find this quite interesting because Pochettino has never had this kind of goalkeeper before. You'd think after 10 years at the top level he would have, but Fraser Forster at Southampton, Hugo Lloris at Tottenham, Gigi Donnarumma and Kayla Navas at PSG, all much more traditional goalkeepers, not that comfortable circulating possession. Kepa is. 
This is the first time we've ever seen Pochettino genuinely use a goalkeeper in ball circulation regularly and try to avoid the press. And so far, it's looking pretty good. So it just adds another layer to Chelsea's build-up and means it's much more secure than perhaps it would have been. It's fitting there that we're talking about close combinations at the back because really that's what Pochettino wants all over the pitch. I'm going to draw your attention to another one of his quotes, one that he perhaps didn't actually intend to give us because it was shouted at the players during a calling break against Brighton. We need to be close to play. The distance is too much, is what he shouted at the players as they broke huddle after about 20 minutes. It's as simple as it sounds. He wants his players to be closer together. At this point in the game, the players have become too far apart, too disparate, and they couldn't combine properly. He's asking his players to shrink back in towards one another so they can combine and play nice, clean, one-two touch football. And in the second half, under this instruction, we saw a genuinely magnificent goal occur. Mikhailo Mudrik comes on in the second half and Nicholas Jackson joins him and these two combine brilliantly. This, this is Mudrik pushing the ball into Nico Jackson's path. He's facing the ball, he's ready to receive. He takes one touch layoff as Mudrik follows the ball in and starts to combine. The midfielders of Brighton not expecting this speed of play, they're on their heels. Nico Jackson takes one touch and turns and goes and Mudrik feeds the ball back into this area for him. He takes another touch and tees up Mikhailo Mudrik and he smashes it into the net. It is a genuinely beautiful strike and it's one of those moments where you think, wow, Mudrik really can be as special as he's touted to be. Now this move, I think, is exactly what Pochettino is striving for. It's what he wants from all of his Chelsea players. He wants them to come closer together. He wants them to work together. He wants them to combine. And this is where we bring in the importance of Nicholas Jackson, because what he's doing so far this preseason is suggesting that he is indeed a number nine of Chelsea's calibre. So let's bring Jackson and Mudrik onto the board. Let's just put them on top of what we had for Chelsea in the first half. It's not exact, but you get the picture. And let's put Jackson up here as the number nine. So he was combining with Mudrik and Mudrik was following the ball here and he was getting into great positions and he's doing it on the other side too. Sterling can bring the ball into him here, can follow towards the ball and can lay it off. Same with Chukwuemeka. His ability to play one touch football, a very simple layoffs, which activates the attacking midfield three, which is basically where Chelsea have stashed all their talent, by the way. Sterling, Mudrik, and Kunku probably ends up there. It's a long list of talented players. If his job, half of it, is just to get the best out of these three, that's a job well done. If he can then add 10 goals or 15 goals of his own while offering that threat, that is a brilliant season from Jackson and he's showing that because he can run in behind and make these runs and drag defenders out of the way, he's got speed to beat them over the top. He can play this ball through here and get on the end of it and take a shot as well as activating all these players. He's looking a lot like the complete number nine in terms of skill set that Pochettino has always really, really liked. All the way back from Ricky Lambert through to Harry Kane, a player that can do a bit of everything has always been the player that he has wanted. And Nicholas Jackson right now is looking the part a lot of question marks this summer as to what Chelsea would do at number nine. Then a lot of questions as to whether Jackson was the number nine. He's answering those emphatically. He looks good. So, so far, so good. But naturally, there's still work to do. It is early days and some issues have cropped up. So a little to-do list for Mauricio Pochettino is as follows. First of all, the identity of these central midfielders and this pairing does need to be decided pretty quickly. We know that Enzo Fernandez will be one of them, but who will be the other? I appreciate that's out of his control, but the sooner they can figure that out, the much better this whole thing will be. I was really impressed with how Malo Gusto defended Caro Mitzema in the Brighton game, but there was a consistent issue for Chelsea defending balls into the box. A situation like this where a left winger can swing the ball in, Kepa probably needs to take greater responsibility in the air, which is something he's always needed to work on, and the centre-backs could do an awful lot better in terms of just clearing their lines nice and quickly. But again, it's about familiarity in a new system and a new shape. It should come. And finally, how will this Ben Chilwell, Mikhailo Mudrik dynamic emerge and how will it improve? And are there some slight issues to perhaps work out? Because when we talk about Chilwell making this run and pushing all the way up here, usually the left winger has to drop inside to create the space. But we know that Mudrik is a player who likes to receive the ball in exactly that area. So will they be on each other's toes or will they be able to figure it out? They're both exceptional footballers. You would back them to find a dynamic and strike up some kind of partnership, but this might be a little bit of a clash here where they both want to try and attack the same space or receive the ball in the same area, and they will have to work on exactly how that goes. Looking much better then. Look what Pochettino has already managed to do. They look much fitter. They look better off the ball. Their pressing has improved. They have build-up patterns. They have 
have specific moves to activate Chilwell and Mudrick and the others. And Nicholas Jackson is doing exactly what Pochettino wants. And he looks like a player that can not only score, but get the best out of all this attacking talent in the midfield three. Still lots to do. No one's hiding from that, but it's looking good so far. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.